Terry, uh, tell me a bit about yourself. So I was trained originally as an engineer, mm -hmm. actually civil engineer, and I worked as a technical expert in renewable energy, pollution control, things like that, for about 10 years. I suddenly had a realization that all of this work we were doing in policy and incentives, none of that meant anything until a salesman showed up in front of a decision maker and tried to get them to do something with those policies or incentives. If that's the case, then if I really want to promote these renewable energy technologies and et cetera, I should go out and learn how to make a sale, which I did. And I was terrible at it when I felt that marketing would had more strategy to it. It had more long-term thinking to it. And I was in the Pacific Northwest in Portland, Oregon, which is one of the epicenters of green building in the U S and then make a, a longer story short. Um, within a few years, I was on the U S green building council board. And at that time, the U.S. GBC had just introduced the LEED system. And in 2001, I became one of the first 10 trainers of the LEED system. And then in 2011, I became a LEED fellow. Like any other uh, adventurer or pioneer, we got a lot of arrows in the back. From being out there to a very skeptical audience. And then the next five years, the 2005 to 10, even through the financial crisis, it took off and then kind of reached steady state around 2011, 12. And the market share in the U.S. of lead has not changed. Mm -hmm. Why isn't this achieving greater market penetration? We've reached the innovator market. That's about 3%. We've attracted some of the so-called early adopters, but we have not got into the mainstream. What you will find is that commercial offices are adopting green building standards. Why? Because it keeps them competitive because they need to convince their employees they're doing something for sustainability. Yeah. That isn't about saving money on energy because in the U.S. energy costs are two and a half percent of building operating costs. Almost all the costs are people. And so getting and keeping good people is the name of the game today. But if you look at healthcare, which is a huge business, almost no adoption. These standards were never developed by the owners. They were developed by people like you and me, green zealots or green gorillas, <laughs> who wanted to make big changes. And the ownership has never bought into it. You know, our goal was to reach 25% of the market and use that to transform the market. Yeah. But if we're only reaching four or 5% of the market oh. after in the US, almost 20 years of hard work by lots of really good people. So I said, all right, if it's got to be, it's got to be me. And I wrote this book, Reinventing Green Building, which um, tried to lay out what's good, what's, or what's working, what's not working, and how can we close the gap yeah. between what's working and what's not working. And, you know, I discovered you quickly throw away costs because in a, in a $50 million, 50 million pound building to spend a quarter million on certification and all the things that go with that, the studies and so forth is, is in the noise level. What I discovered, I think was that it is no longer news mm -hmm. and you can no longer be the first certified building unless you put on 10 or 15 adjectives in front, like, <laughs> I'm the first LEED certified building in Southeastern Ohio um, <laughs> for secondary schools that deal with children with development disabilities. So the PR value went away. Yeah. And people said, well, look, you know, we're serious people. We're a university, a leading university. We will just use this system and we will hold our contractors to it but we're not going to bother with the third party certification. So at some point rating systems have a utility. If somebody needs to demonstrate to somebody else that they achieve something. Mm. Um, and the, the question is cost and then timeliness. My last lead project, which is already six years ago, it took a year and a half to get a certificate. 
after we had submitted all the paperwork. It isn't the, the few thousand dollars or pounds for the final certification, it's all the consultants, et cetera. And they said, look, we just don't see any value mm. in the certification. Well, that's okay. Let's just do self-certification yeah. with random audits. In the US, we have 140 million annual individual tax returns. They are for the most part done honestly because of random audits and severe penalties. So why can't we do the same? So that's why I like self-certification with random audits because you can self-certify at the point of move in, at the point when the press is interested in what you've done, at the point when employees are being hired. It's an unwillingness in my view to engage with the users and owners of real estate. Mm. It's just, we know better. And if you want our seal, you'll do it our way. Climate change is the only issue we're talking about. Let's focus on zero net energy as a starter and maybe plus energy. You've gonna to have to deal with this thing in a big way. Yeah. And I say that because we know the oceans are gonna keep warming and acidifying for a couple hundred years no matter what we do today, yeah. unless we suddenly figure out a way to suck all that carbon out of the atmosphere, turn it into limestone and use it for buildings. The real issue, which is we don't know how to live sustainably on the planet at a high level of comfort and civilization and health over the long term. Yeah. We are now using, depending on your Statistics between one and a half and two and a half Earth's worth yeah. of resources every year. And we've been at sustainability for 30 years. And CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere have been going up almost every year. There is no plan B, or as I like to say, there is no plan at B. We have got to get to where we are living within our means energetically. To my mind, incrementalism doesn't work anymore. Five years ago now, I had an assignment, a consulting assignment mm -hmm. uh, with an Australian software company that does basically um, energy dashboards for buildings, cloud computing, um, cheap sensing, big data, visualization techniques, blah, blah, blah. And kind of opened my eyes to what's possible now. If I know how old your apartment is, the condition of the windows, the condition of the roof, um, it's past energy use and whether it has an elevator or not, I can get within 90% of how much energy it uses. Software can do this now and it can prescribe for any budget the most cost-effective measures. From a marketer's point of view, we have lots of understanding now about how to persuade people to adopt these measures. We have all of this good knowledge, all this good technology, you just need to bring it to bear mm. in user-friendly and appropriate ways. So the majority of clients, developers, etc., really don't get the importance of sustainability. What is the, the, the best strategy in that sense? The most important discussion you can have takes place in the very first hour of your assignment, mm. when the top decision makers are still in the room. The first question ought to be, tell me about your business. Do you have to look for win-wins? on all dimensions, yeah. environment, economy, and social. And I think that's where sustainability consultants really add value. Bringing in examples, multiple examples of similar organizations doing well, because we have all this worldwide knowledge yeah. via the internet and via our networks. None of this, again, is rocket science, it's just bringing it to bear on a specific problem. This is an endeavor that's going to last the rest of your careers. You are the people that are going to do it. So as the slogan for Nike says, just do it. So some good things have come, some challenges have come, but you are up to it. So just do it. If you like what you just saw, you can go to thegreengorilla.co.uk for more ideas, more resources, more videos, and of course, the Green Gorilla courses. 